Okay, let's keep an eye out. Let's see. Ooh, a star stone. Whoa! I just got... What? Hello and welcome everyone to some more Divinity Original Sin. My goal for this episode, and we'll see if we get to it, is uh, see if we can find Captain Aureus at the Legion headquarters. But we're just going to kind of be exploring and talking to people around town and just getting to know the places and the people. Oh, and yeah, here's a waypoint, which is nice. Also, I do have a new um, TV that I'm using, monitor, so for me it looks so much brighter. Oh, new information added to a log. What new information? Uh, oh, maybe it's one of these things. There's nothing updated down here. Uh, so yeah, we're just going to kind of go talking to people and uh, see, see if we, what we can learn. Okay, so a little bit further out past this gate, there's a lot of orc corpses and legionnaire corpses, so... Need to be ready for that at some point. Here's uh, Evelyn's house. I cannot... I won't be able to open it, right? Open a lock, door or chest. You can find a key, learn how to lockpick. Okay. Uh, I need to get in there somehow. That would be breaking and entering. Don't want to do that. Because that's Evelyn's house. Evelyn is uh, the councilman's... Oh, this is not breaking and entering, but that's locked as well. That was the councilman's... Councillor Jake's uh, wife's name. What in the world? This is like a... Whoa! Found something. And we're going to need a shovel as well. I also ran into a place in Baldur's Gate 3 where I needed a shovel. And I can't talk to these guys, right? Yeah, I don't, I don't know... I don't speak sheep. Theli, Theliron's House of Healing. Let's go inside. Oh gosh. That would be very hard to sleep with all that groaning and sickly people. All right, let's talk to this guy. If one were to reduce the quantity of skull dust by a percentage of uh, two, hmm? perhaps the stability could be increased by as much as Threefold. <clears throat> oh, a source hunter. <laughs> Imagine that. Quite a bit more petite than the last of your kind I encountered, aren't you? Yes, by nearly 20 centimeters of tibia, as my memory serves. That would be like petite. Isn't that more of like overall body mass? So it's not just height. It's like. Anybody? I don't know. It's just interesting. <laughs> no matter, no matter. <laughs> Even if it couldn't spare its heartiest specimen, I'm sure the order sent the individual with the next highest probability of success. Yeah? Hey, do you have any work for a trio of sailors? I kind of doubt it. Sorry, but uh, there isn't much work for sailors in a house of medicine. Unless one of them happens to have a secret stash of healing stones. <laughs> hey, they might. I, I, You know what? I didn't ask. Tell me about Jake's murder. The counselor... Terrible loss, that. Though we were hardly more than acquaintances, I knew him to be a devoted civil servant. Okay, that's good. Sounds like a good guy. From what I can tell, it seems to be a simple case of jealousy turned violent. The affairs of his wife, Esmeralda, were hardly a secret, you know. Oh, Esmeralda, not Evelyn. So that other house was not his wife's. I, I thought it was kind of weird that, like, why would they have a separate house? Anyways, what can you tell me about the plague of the undead? There's a plague going around? So, I've applied myself to that problem for two years and still haven't come a step closer to solving it. I declare it an act of the Almighty's, if I believed in such things. Some events, Source Hunter, can be neither controlled nor understood by mere men. I will have to look into that plague. So, tell me about yourself. It was I who cured the Duchess of Arata. Of her unslakable thirst, a simple pinch of a tropa belladonna in her morning tea. <laughs> I who discovered that aging itself can be halted by a single application of secuta du glacis on the tongue. Really? Not to mention that it's been my guidance that has permitted my apprentice Evelyn to make quite a name for herself around Cicel of late. Ah, that's that's Evelyn's house out there. Okay, so your apprentice has enjoyed some success? Yes, yes. <clears throat> if that's how we're referring to the secretive use of a revolutionary healing method she refuses to share with her own master. 
Okay, so Evelyn has some secret magic healing thing and she's not telling him about it. That is very interesting. We'll have to go to talk to her next. She's in the other room as we speak. Perhaps you can prevail upon her to offer a demonstration. Yes, definitely. All right, let's go. Let's see if we can go talk to her a little bit. I will say this is the uh, what the special edition or enhanced edition. It is a nice touch that whenever I am in, uh, whenever I'm talking to someone, the the groans and moans and stuff from other people around just kind of fade in the background. That is nice. Can I talk to you? Excuse me. This is a private sick room. Who in the name of the seven do you think you are barging in here? Out, I say, right this instant. Uh, no. Tell me about yourself <laughs> before you know, in the midst of your anger. Really quick, tell me about yourself. Oh, I'm sorry. It's this task. I'm just... Who am I to meddle with life and death this way? Yeah, that's a good point. I'm an apprentice of the healing arts. Healing. But this decision feels like precisely the opposite. I have but one healing stone, you see. And two direly wounded men who need it. I've been racking my brain trying to decide on the best method to settle this grave situation, but perhaps it's better off in the hands of an esteemed source hunter. Surely you are more accustomed to weighing life and death than I. Uh, sure I am. Well, first tell me about your healing stone. Yes, a curious relic indeed. I got it from a kindly abbot, Loik by name, in the northern town of Silver Glen, he is of a certain faith, the Immaculates, they call themselves, that espouses the belief that certain stones can heal wounded flesh. But it's strange. The stone is only good for a single use at a time before it reverts to a useless, inert state. It takes time to regain its magical properties, and I guard it cautiously. Okay, so it's not a one-time use, but it does take time to recharge. And I guess they're all trying to moan and groan louder than the other person. <laughs> Alright, well tell me about the patients. What would you like to know? Tell me about Boris, I guess. I don't know which one's Boris. One of the brave few willing to traverse the trade routes plagued by the undead. A young man, but excellent in matters of business, before he fell victim to an orcish club in the north, that is. Orcish club? Thankfully for him, a cattle trader found him, nearly dead, but not quite so, and brought him here straight away. All right, well, tell me about Stephen. Quite the venerable staple of Sy Seal, Stephen, and recently blessed with his third grandchild. He was leading a crew of builders when a stray beam struck him in the temple, and only a few days shy of his last day of work before retirement, no less. Nearly everyone in Seal is familiar with grinning Stephen, and as you can imagine, he's quite dear to his family. Yeah, as I'm sure Boris's family is pretty dear to him as well. So dither long, these men are slipping ever closer toward the edge with each passing minute. Okay, I'm curious if there's actually a time limit. Please, these men don't have long. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, hold on. The apprentice in the stone, the healer's apprentice, asks us to help her decide which men, which guys should be healed. I'm hoping there's no actual time limit. Something just updated. We didn't choose to. Both men died. Are you kidding me? I didn't. You should have said that. Oh, I feel terrible, Evelyn. And she's there. She is. Hey, Evelyn. Nope, nope. Don't steal. An utter waste to let them both. Perish, a waste of their lives, of my duty, of the trust I put in you. I just met you, and you're like, I'm gonna put all this decision and weight on you. It's not my fault. Jeez, this is all this is all on you. Hmm. Well, that really sucks. Like, I honestly didn't think it would be that instant. Like, I, if she had said, "Hey, if you leave, they will die," then okay, maybe I would have gotten the hint and not left the place. But uh, didn't tell me, and I don't really want to just quick reload and stuff like that because I don't I don't really like doing that whenever I'm doing let's plays for YouTube and stuff. If I was doing this maybe on my own, I probably would have. What I was going to say, I was going to ask you guys, let me know in the comments, but you know apparently that, that didn't work. So I believe 
Yeah, the Legion headquarters is way over there. The crimes, let's actually go look at the crime scene because that's closer by. So yeah, sometimes the goal of the videos is going to change because the game, you know, I don't, I've never played this, so I don't know where everything is. So the goal was, you know, go visit, um, wait, where's the door? Visit the Legionnaire, but he's a little bit further down. Ooh, rope. Can I grab that? No, I cannot. So, uh, yeah, let's go investigate the crime scene. Let's talk to these. See, hey, no one's around. You wouldn't raise a fuss if I, uh, borrowed one of these fish, would you? Hmm. Borrow, indeed. I'll sooner meet a cat wizard than see that merchant repaid. Come now, I'll be good for it, I swear. Are you in the habit of stealing, good sir? I never would have dreamt of resorting to petty theft during better times. But what choice have I got now? If it's steal or starve, I'll choose steal. Okay, this is going to be interesting. So what do you think? Should I snag a fish? So... In the real world, well, okay, he should get a job if he can. I don't know what how the economy is in Divinity. Or find a place that can provide for him. Like there's charities and stuff, which in this game, I don't know if there is that. You know what? I would say just take the fish. But no, man. You know what? Stealing's bad. Leave it alone. That merchant has to eat too, you know? Leave the fish alone. I'm going to I'm going to go I'm going to go against myself. He should take the fish. I'm curious what's going to happen. I'm sure this one little fish won't starve the merchant. He should take the fish. Oh, and now I get to like I have to uh intimidate, charm or reason that fish simply isn't ours to give. We can't offer it up as though we had the right to do so. I agree with that. That fish simply isn't ours to give. We can't offer it up as though we have the right to do so. I like this one though. Whether the merchant loses a fish? Well, she'll read it. Whether the merchant loses a fish or this man goes hungry, someone will suffer in this equation. We might as well help the man in the most dire need. When a series of rock, paper, scissors matches to convince the other party. But it's just me, is it? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna skip this. <laughs> Roderick won! Good job. No, we'll do as I say. <sighs> I suppose you've got a point. Another day, another rumbling belly. Go find a job, like work Hungry somewhere. Man, I mean, is there is the economy just bad and there's no jobs? Are there no Of course this isn't this isn't this looks like, you know, this is old. This is not like a country that you know has a lot of resources and stuff, so obviously there probably wouldn't be a charity. I don't know, man. That's a tough decision in that case. Where's the... It's way over there. Oh, it's in here. That's right. Uh, I think this guy's going to stop me if I remember you, uh, right. A moment of your indulgence, if you please. You are the source hunter, are you not? The hero the whole of Sysiel is a buzz about. The talk of the town. The juiciest grape on the grapevine. Such a pleasure to meet you. A delight. I do not like this guy already. <laughs> no, scratch that. See here, you and I share the same passion. I never doubted it for a moment. The thrill of walking the unbeaten path. The rush of finding yourself in a goblin ambush, knowing you'll prevail nonetheless. Hmm, too bad your line of work comes with such measly recompense. Am I right? The wage of a mere soldier. Now, between you and me, tell me truthfully, don't you sometimes wish you could earn more? You know what? More money is good. Well, I can't say that I haven't. Yes, some extra gold is always welcome. Indeed. Indeed, gold is always welcome. And among the fabulous five, gold flows as freely as water does to the sea. Ah, oh, the fabulous five. How I enjoy simply saying the words that describe the most illustrious and celebrated adventurers' guild in Rivalon. Our mission, to better the world. Our mantra, to better ourselves as we do so. 
to realize our dreams and cleanse our souls. Sounds good. You'd like nothing more than to enlist, wouldn't you? Yeah, sure, why not? Let's enlist. Of course, of course, of course. All you need to do is sign this waiver, and just like that, snap, you're part of the family. Yeah, let's do it. Let's join this guild. Join a guild, better the world, earn a lot of gold. Yes, count me in. And me. May all the riches in the world be ours. To business. Your first assignment is ready and waiting, if you're ready and willing. Uh, yeah, tell me about my first assignment. Oh, it's a pretty straightforward task, this one. Now, in this town dwells a wizard. Ahu is his name, and he's a frightful eccentric. Scientific type, you know the kind. Favors reason over faith and all that. Not Fabulous Five material, him. His experimental weapons may keep a couple of skeletons away from the city, but many of his other researches failed. Malfunction with tragic consequences. Uh, that sounds really dangerous. One of them was a big lumbering apparatus, a frightful automaton shaped like a giant made of steel. It was supposed to crush the undead by the dozens, piloted as it was by a trained legionnaire. But you can guess what happened. Did it become sentient? Was it cursed? Whatever the cause, the thing relieved itself of its pilot and headed north towards a network of caves. Now ask yourself, what if it comes back? It could smash the city walls and claim a hundred lives before being subdued. Go, my friend. Find this wizard's abomination and claim your just reward from Mayor Cecil in the name of our hallowed guild. Easy money. Oh, yeah, easy. Yeah, just destroy this monstrosity. Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, hey, do you have any ideas for a job for some sailors? You found new recruits already? Efficient, proactive. Oh, I like that. Send them to me and I'll sign them up. And of course, since they're your recruits, you'll get a share of every assignment they complete. Isn't that just fabulous? It sounds like a pyramid scheme. <laughs> All right, let's head over to them, actually. Let's let them know we found them uh, a job. Hey guys, good news. I found you all a job. It's adventurers. a job yet. We'll take anything. Really? Yeah, about finding work. The Fabulous Five, eh? That sounds like just the right opportunity for three brawny buccaneers like us. We'll go right away. Thanks. Sweet. I wonder if I actually... <laughs> Alright, shipless sailors. We told the workers they could become part of the Fabulous Five. They accepted. Do I need to go back and tell them? No, maybe not. That's done. Okay. I'm curious if I actually do earn money. Like, I'm going to go back there at some point and uh, maybe after a few hours of gameplay or something or story progress and just see if they've, if I've earned any passive income. That sounds pretty awesome. I'm curious though. Let's see if we can leave. Hold. These gates are to remain closed at all times. Captain's orders. Hmm, wait a second. Well, I'll be a little red imp's uncle, the source hunter. Sorry for the gruff treatment. I didn't recognize you right away. Please tell me, how can I aid the investigation? Uh, open the gate? I don't think you're quite ready to head out into the wilds to me. Also, a party of one or two runs the risk of being outflanked and outnumbered. I'll bring some backup if I were you. Of course, the choice is yours. But are you sure you want to venture out? Okay, Thank yeah. Thank you for heeding my words of warning, Hunter. Cyseal needs you. Needs you alive and well. It's interesting that the game actually does that. It kind of warns you. Like, ah, oh, you're not quite leveled up enough, and you, there are, so apparently there are more people in Sysiel I can recruit. Because, yeah, I can't leave Sysiel, or at least not through that way, so... I think there's a, there's a lady in here, a rogue or a hunter or something like that I can recruit, if I remember correctly. But, uh, for the time being, let's go ahead and head over to the crime scene, which is right here, but I can't get in there. I have to go through the, um, through the tavern to get inside. On my way there, I found this um, fish vendor, and I can ask her about the fish thief, actually. I listened in while you were talking to that would-be thief. Thank you for preserving my stock. 
It's no wonder you source hunters are known for setting the place straight. Oh, cool. She's right here. Oh, that's nice. Do I, I don't, I don't get like reputation or something? That's interesting. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, but that's cool that she was right there and listening. So I'm glad I made the right choice. The King Crab Inn. We made it. And for some reason, this is where the counselor lived? Did he live here or did he just have a, like a room here? Can I go in there? Oh, no, it's locked. Let's open it. I don't think this is the place. Yeah, but there's Francis. Greetings, traveler. And may the Immaculate Conduit's myriad blessings comfort and cradle you. Tell me, have you yet heard the revelation? You sound like the guy just outside the inn that recruited me to the Fabulous Five. Are you the same guy? <laughs> what? Tell me about this revelation. You mean you haven't heard? Oh, what fortune that I may share the goddess's salvation with one who has, as yet, been lost. Steal yourself, friend, for your mortal spirit could be forever transformed from this moment forth. The conduit, our link to the goddess herself, has given us a special gift, and the gift is thus. By following her instructions and becoming initiated into the one way, we can each of us live on for a span greater than the number of stars that twinkle within the goddess's right eye. Is this immortality? I, And we need to be initiated into the one way. What does that mean? Tell me about that. Ah, for this hallowed information, you must seek an immaculate chapel. Go north, friend, through the forest and into the town of Silver Glen, where all may be revealed. Okay, well, I don't think I can do this yet. I don't think I can go that way. Okay, well, can you tell me more about this conduit? She came from on high to we mortals and showed us the path to the goddess, where all living souls are naturally inclined. Oh, naturally, yeah. She showed us that injury and malady need not mark the end of life, but that through her methods, we could ascend to greater life in service of the goddess. Okay. Go on the path to the righteous, my friend. Forget not that the conduit has great plans for you. The conduit, all right. Maybe keep an eye out for someone called the conduit or, okay, even reading that is would be not good. Yeah, interesting. All right, let me lead with Roderick. Actually, let me let me look at their. Nope, not sneaking. Not sneaking. Nope, not that. Jeez, what's what's character inventory? <laughs> Who has better charisma? Okay, Roderick has one. Okay, yeah, I should be talking to people with Roderick in case I have to do any kind of um, you know, persuading or anything. Okay, this is where. Counselor Jake died. Let's talk to the Legionnaire. Greetings, Source Hunter. I don't mean to hinder your investigation, but I can't open this door for anyone who hasn't received Captain Aureus' explicit approval. Oh my gosh. Okay, fine. We'll go talk to the Captain Aureus. So apparently we are going to talk to Captain Aureus. I kind of thought we'd be exploring a little bit more, but nope. We need to go to talk to the Captain. So let's head there. Where is he? He is over here. Yeah, so let's just head over in that direction. Let's talk to this enchantress. Does oh, she? Oh no, noble friend! Your upper chakras are in desperate need of a good scrubbing. Fortunately for you, my homebrew tinctures will do the job. Or if you're in the mood for something a bit more electrifying, one of my air scrolls might give your system just the shock it needs. I'm actually looking for potions and resurrect scrolls. Oh wow, you've got some nice stuff. Didn't I pick up a bunch of things? Nope, don't. I don't want to sell that. I thought I picked up a lot of stuff. Maybe I didn't? Oh, man. Well, I guess not. Well, can she identify stuff? Yes, she can. Identify this, please. Uh, will cost you 17 gold. Yes. Did I do it? Okay, and then identify this. 34 gold. Nice. Okay, well, and then you... Whoops. You do have some potions. How much is that going to cost me? 
Five hundred and seven. No way. I'm not. I'm not doing that. That is insanely expensive. Okay. Inventory. Let's go to hers. So this. Oh wow, that's much better plating. Unbreakable. Forty-six armor rating. It's still. It has a tiny bit less movement. But let's give that to her. And she's she's wielding a two-handed, so she can't use this shield, but still, maybe somebody else I can, can use it whenever I find another companion somewhere. Okay, this should be the captain, so let's go in here and try to talk to him. No. No, this isn't it. This is Esmeralda. They're all practicing their stuff. Okay, here we go. Is this it? This has got to be it. Alright, now let's find Captain Aureus. Legion headquarters. Evidence chests. Ooh. Okay, are you the captain? Yeah, Aureus. What have we here then? A so called source hunter, eh? Well, look, do what you must in Sisil, but don't make waves and don't interfere with the Legion's affairs, you hear? Why do you say so called source hunter? Jeez. Tell me about uh, Jake's murder. Gods above! Some politician snuffs it and everyone's in an uproar. Ridiculous. I told that wizard brat of an Ahu not to bother, but he just had to send for source hunters, didn't he? Bloody magicians. They see a pigeon poop and think sorcery is afoot. This is the same voice actor that the last two people I talked to, uh, I mean, other than the guards. That's funny. Nevertheless, I want to be kept in the loop, understand? I am in command of this town, not Mayor Cecil, not Ahu, and definitely not some hotshot source hunter. So investigate Jake's death if you feel so inclined, but report back to me the moment you discover something out of the ordinary. Is this a militaristic society? Because he says, I am in command, not the mayor, which is if, if you know, in our society, the, the government is kind of the ones in charge and the military works for the government. I wonder if this is, or if he's just trying to act tough. The scene of the crime is over at the King Crab Inn. You can tell the guard you have my permission to enter. Now off with you. Okay, well tell me about uh, Esmeralda. Esmeralda is Jake's wife. Well, well, widow. Everyone in town, down to the crabs on the beach, is convinced she killed him. Now, the girl has the reputation of being a flirt. There is that. But that doesn't suffice as evidence, wouldn't you say? Or do source hunters rely on hearsay alone, perhaps? That certainly would explain some of the cock-ups you lot have made in the past. Okay, this guy does not like source hunters. What? You're going to stand there and claim with a straight face your order never wrongly tortured and executed anyone? Thirdly, but I won't stand for such nonsense. If you bring evidence before me, I'll evaluate it with perfect objectivity. The Legion relies on reason, see? Not idle superstition. Okay, so he is not in the same order that I am. In the second one, yes, Source Hunters, did a lot of things that were bad. I haven't beaten the second one, but yeah, so I see where he's going there. Um, but uh, I don't know too much about Source Hunters in this world, in this game, because this is pre-Divinity. Oh, hey, this is the girl I think I can recruit. Hey, who's that then? Come on, stand where my good eye can see you. Easy, Tull. That's the Source Hunter you're talking to. Yeah, a curious situation you've got here. Is the woman in a cage? Or is this woman under arrest? She may have the look of a woman if you squint hard enough, but she's no more than a wild animal. Okay. We got reports of a strange-looking outsider skulking through the town with her bow drawn. I found her crouched behind a tree, taking aim at a fat old rat trotting along the city walls. I tapped her on the shoulder to see what was what, and the beast startled like a wild cat and lunged right at me. Okay, yeah, that's not good. Bit tell you right in the face she did. Ooh. It wasn't pretty, and now it's got a chunk ripped off it to boot. Ugh. Enjoy it while you can, Ver. There's not another legionnaire in the cohort that'll have you if I go rabid. 
Okay, and what's gonna become of this woman? Well, that's to be decided. She doesn't seem to be sick, despite Tully's moaning. We can't keep her here forever, but we can't well send her into the wilds again, can we? I mean, she could just climb out, you know, put her foot there and then climb out of the cage. Again. Uh, I say we take this stranger under our wing. Perhaps it'd be worth taking this stranger under our wing. She'll likely come in handy if we can trust her to watch our backs. After all, a fearless hunter might prove quite useful for our investigation. Well, that's a relief, ain't it? We found a good home for her after all, Tull. All right. Heed me, source hunter. She's not good for anything more than cannon fodder. And don't turn your back on her when she's got that bow within arm's reach. Interesting. Okay, so what's your name? Let's talk to her, actually, really quick. Hunter, I have heard tales both grand and terrible about the world of humans. I myself was caged one moment and freed the next by your... our... kind. Okay. In Home Forest, every creature acts according to the nature of its kind. Birds frighten easily. Badgers fear little. But amongst men... There are no guarantees. Is she like a... She was raised by animals or something? Attention! Oh, he didn't read that. That's interesting. Uh -oh. There's little in our world more variable than the minds of men. It is the source of great beauty and much despair. And all of it uniquely human. Okay, I'm going to read this because I don't know if she's going to read it. We take each in stride and prepare for either. You'll find your fellows surprise you for better and for worse in equal parts equal parts bear daughter it is difficult for me to claim humanity as you do i am still learning to see myself in the faces of those i meet and those i meet do not always see themselves in me it is strange to stand with one foot in the forest and the other in the city source hunter i am glad that now i have you standing beside me oh i'm glad you joined the crew and the team okay now that we've got her let's head back over to the crime scene. I want to do the crime scene. <laughs> At least, uh, you know, learn what we can. And then there's so much here to explore. There's so many people to explore. And I'm probably going to cut a lot of it down. Unless it's really interesting. Um, or, or like necessary to the story or whatever. Because I know a lot of it is, is uh, like flavor text and stuff like that so we'll see but guys let me know in the comments if you want me to keep in a lot of the commentary or if you you know prefer me to kind of trim it down a little bit that's what i'm going to do with this i'm doing this with um baldur's gate 3 all right so let's head over here actually what is bear daughter that's a good question where does it say what what i am oh bear daughter doesn't even have a weapon Okay, I guess she's... I need to get her a weapon then. Yeah, she's got nothing. I mean, it makes sense she was in prison. I don't know what my... What is my, uh... Talents... What's my class? How do I view my class? Okay, back to the King Crab Inn. Let's talk to this Legionnaire again, and hopefully he'll let us inside the room. Greetings, Source Hunter. I don't mean to hinder your Yeah, I've spoken to Aureus. Let me inside. This. Not exactly the friendliest bloke, the captain, is he? Well, your reward for getting your ear chewed off is a waltz through the town's finest magical murder scene. Enjoy. Ah, uh, thank you. And no, he is not a very friendly guy. Okay, let's keep an eye out. Let's see. Ooh, a Starstone. Whoa! I just got... So what? The heck just happened? <laughs> and we're in another plane! What? what happened? Is this a dream? I don't think so. That stone... Somehow, it sent us flying into the stars. Yeah, what in the world? This is very strange. This is cool though, but uh, yeah, don't know what the heck just happened, but we're gonna figure it out next time. Guys, thank you for watching this episode of Divinity Original Sin. 
If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing and let me know what you think down in the comments below. And I'll see everybody in the next episode.